Hi, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Food Lady Dominique and we are refreshing our pasta madre. I will be doing both a large amount and a smaller amount. And the importance of that is einkorn flour is expensive. So if you're refreshing a pasta madre this big every day, that gets expensive. And you're gonna be doing this every 12 hours to 24 hours to 36 or 48, depending how much flour you use and how much you want to keep the sweetness or intensify the acidity. Look below in the description and I will give you the ratios of what you're using and when to refresh depending on the amount of flour that you use. What you need, first of all, take rings off. If you have long hair, always keep it back because you don't want any hair to get into that. So first you need your pasta madre. You need a fresh container. For the containers, you actually want them narrow and tall because you want the pasta madre to be able to hug the walls and it walks itself up out of the water as it's growing. For the little one, I found these gray containers at the container store, I believe, and depending on how much I'm making, I'm either using a bigger one or a smaller one. Normally, when I take the pasta madre out of the water, I do it over the sink. I've got a big bowl that is acting as the sink. You're gonna need a bowl to mix it in. You're gonna need a spoon, a knife, a scale. I always work in grams. It's just more exact. And then you need your flour. Use all-purpose flour, not whole wheat flour. It's perfectly fine to bake with whole wheat. That's what I do all the time. But when you are refreshing and keeping your pasta madre, the wheat bran that is in whole wheat flour creates more acidity. So it's much better to refresh with all-purpose flour. And a plate. Oh, by the way, the reason why there's an elastic around here, what I do is I put an elastic at the level where it was so that I can see how much it's grown. And this, you can see by the marks that it's made on the side, that it grew all the way to here, which means that it doubled. And that's what you're looking for. With regular wheat, it will quite often triple or more than triple, but you're just not gonna find that with einkorn because it doesn't have that gluten. So as the gas is being created by the bacteria, it's escaping. So it's just not building up as much. However, um, it will go to double and that's what you're looking for and that's why I put the elastic on the outside of the container. The first thing that you want to do is you let the water run out. And let this fall into your hand. And then any of the pieces that are very, very wet and slimy, just let them fall into the water. Once you do that, you take the rest and you squeeze. And that is going to squeeze out more of any of the slimy pieces. The slimy, wetter pieces are where the bacteria has already died. So you're deciding, thank you very much, you've done your job and you're moving on. You put it down on your plate and then you wash your slimy hands and you get your water. I have a filter system that does reverse osmosis and then remineralizes. You don't want just reverse osmosis because you want the water to have all of the minerals in there. That also feeds the bacteria. The next step is to again, try to take away any of the pieces that are already breaking apart. Then you lift up and you chip away at the hard crust. And you start by taking the part that's right underneath the hard crust. So if I take all of this and I see I have 172 and let's see if I can get any more and get it up to 200. Now I put the equal amount of flour. And once you have your flour in there, what you do is you pinch it through and just break up the pasta madre in there as much as you can. I found that if you put in your water and your flour together and then you try to put it together, it just doesn't mix through as well. See, now it's in smaller bits like this. Now you put your water. I have seen that in my environment with my einkorn and this specific bacteria, 
it is taking 30% water to the amount of flour. That seems to be the sweet spot. So I am putting in 65 grams. There we go. Then you take your spoon and you just try to work that together. The reason why I use a spoon is with the spoon, you can kind of grab the dough and rub it against the sides and help bring in the flour as much as possible in the bowl first. Then once you can't do any more with the spoon, start going in with your hands. The reason why you want to use your hands is you have yeasts and bacteria is living on your skin that are personalized for you and your family because you match up with your family. The more of your personal bacterias you're putting into it, the better it's gonna be for your digestion. So now what I did is I took it out of the bowl and I just keep working the flour in. Einkorn does not absorb water as well as modern wheat. And so because of that, sometimes it takes a little bit longer to work it in. You are just wanting to get it worked in so that you've got yeasts and bacteria throughout your dough. You take a rolling pin and you basically want to roll and fold. Roll it out, fold it three ways, turn it that way. You are wanting to roll and fold it until you see that it is smooth and it has a good elasticity. And it looks like that's where we've gotten to. See how nice and even it is? And it has a nice elasticity. When I push it in, it comes back out. So now what I do, roll it long ways. So I do that fold and get a longer rectangle. And then I turn it over and I roll it nice and tightly. I push it in and roll it out so that this actually comes together. I'm rolling it like this so that some of the water and the oxygen is able to go in there, but I don't want too much. I don't want to make this a slimy, watery mess. So I roll it and then I push it in and I roll it until I feel that it's come together enough. And now it has. If I try to lift that, it doesn't. If I try to press these open, they don't. That's what I want. The shape that I want is so that it goes down and touches, just about touches the sides. So I'm gonna push it over a little bit and there we go. And you put it right into your container. And what you wanna do is you want the water to just cover it. So I'm gonna pour this out and there you go. It just covers it. But I put the elastic here so that I know where it starts. Refreshing the pasta madre, either big quantities or small quantities. Now I'm gonna be posting videos on so many great things that you can bake with it using einkorn, from panettone to focaccia to great holiday breads, so many great treats, and they can be healthy for you. So subscribe and click the little bell notification button so that you know when my new videos are coming out. In the comment section, ask me any questions. If you've got any problems or something comes up, I will probably have gone through it. And if I haven't, I will look it up and get you the answer. Thank you so much for coming and I'll see you again soon.